Hi there, this is Jeanette. Today I have a fun mermaid shaker card for you featuring Lawn Fawn's Mermaid For You stamp and die sets. I also used my new Gansei Tambi uh, watercolor palette from Kiritaki to create the background. So you can see there's tons of components in this shaker card and I'm going to walk you through how I did it. This is a piece of Canson watercolor paper. I cut it to be four and a quarter by five and a half. I just wet it with um, that large brush. I propped it up on the ink pad so that the water and the color will run downwards um, to the bottom of the card. And I'm starting with a lighter aqua, then a deeper sort of greeny aqua, adding that to the bottom of that color. And I'm just letting that water and color sort of pull down to the bottom and you can see how pretty it sort of works and I'm just sort of randomly dabbing the color and it's just moving on the paper on its own. It's really pretty. The um, palette is amazing. I love the pigmentation in the colors. I love how strong the colors are. So pretty. And then you can sort of dilute them a little bit with water. Here there was a bit of water pooling at the bottom so I just soaked it up with my paper towel and now I'm just playing around with you know adding some random drips of water here and there to create a really pretty background. My paper did curl up quite a bit I think next time I will tape it down on cardboard before doing it. So now I have some Nina cardstock and I'm using my misty tool here and I'm just laying all the stamps that I want to use out onto the paper so I was going to use the three mermaids and then a bunch of the sort of accessory stamps. Now I'm just sort of getting them adhered to the lid there and I'm going to put some Memento Tuxedo Black ink on them, stamp it, and I did it a second time just to get a really good imprint. I've listed all the Copic marker colors I'm using at the bottom here on the screen. Just quickly adding the colors from the lightest to the darkest and just blending in between. I'm going to work on the hair next. I just colored the entire hair with a very light yellow color and then I'm letting that dry before I work on it a little bit more. Just retouching the skin so it's exactly how I want it. Now I'm coming in with a darker yellow marker and sort of adding the contrast and the shadows to the hair. I'm going to blend that out a little bit with the lighter color. And then this is a darker shade again, adding a little bit less of this, but this just gives definition to the hair. These are pretty small images, so there's not a whole lot of finessing needed when you're coloring with the Copics. coloring the top here and then the tail. I decided to do two of the tails at once. That's a lighter green color. Moving in with a sort of mid-tone color. This is my darker color for contrast. And then I'll just blend it all out. And I'll move to the next tail. Do the same thing. I want to add a dot detail to the tails so I'm sort of letting the ink dry on the first one before I go in and add the dots. That way they won't sort of blend in with the rest of the coloring. They will stay as tiny little dots. So you can see that's what I'm doing here with the darker marker. And of course I'm just going to fix the hair a little bit more. You can always go back and forth until you get your coloring perfectly um, or perfect for you. I'm going to move to the next face here using the exact same colors. Not a whole lot of blended needed because the images are, are quite small. For the hair on this one I am using the same sort of base color and I decided I wanted to make her more of a redhead, so I'm adding a little bit of this orange color here. 
I'm going to blend that out. And then I'll add a sort of orangey brown um, right at the tips and the edges. Bring that orange back in and then just blend that out. And you can see that she looks like a little redhead. I'm going to do a nice little violet top for this one. So the face of that third one was done exactly the same as the other two. Now I'm doing the hair. I am going to make um, her hair sort of black. I did add a little bit of blue sort of undertone so her hair will look nice and shiny. And then I'm just completing the coloration the way I did for the first two mermaids. I'm just covering up that blue now so you can see you have a nice sort of shine and it doesn't look as blue as when we first put the blue on. I'm going to do her top blue, sort of match the tones in her hair. Do the dot detail on her tail. Then I'm going to move on to the little seahorse. So I used two of the violet markers and then I decided I wanted to make the seahorse a little bit more of a pink hue so I went over it with um, R20 I believe. The numbers listed for you. Cleaning up with my blender pen there. And then just the star and the crown with some yellows. And the shell with some blue greens. I'm going to do the rocks with some gray markers. You can see that the coloring here is pretty speedy. I mean this is sped up for you, but um, it didn't take a whole lot of time to do the coloring here. I'm going to blend that out with my lightest color. I'm adding some dot detail now with a white gel pen that just makes everything pop nicely. So on the seahorse, on the tails, and then just a little highlight on each of the mermaid's cheeks. So now I'm just cutting apart those dies. I have a little metal cutter here to just sort of cut them apart quickly. I'm just sort of matching which ones I need. I'm going to adhere them to my paper with some post-it tape and I'm going to try to run as many through my Big Shot at the same time as possible. Sometimes if you stamp them a little too close together though you can't um, get all the dies on in one shot. Here I'm just stamping some of the I guess seaweed and the coral just using a bunch of pretty colors stamping multiples of them. I'm not sure how many I'm going to use but I like to stamp a whole bunch so that I have them if I need them. So here you can see now I'm sort of lining the dies up with the images and adhering them with the post-it tape so they won't move when they run through my Big Shot. So that one there I couldn't put down because I had it a little too close. It was stamped a little too close to the other one so I'm going to cut as many as I can at one time. Pop everything out of those dies. And then I will add the other dies and run that through a second time and then I actually had to do it a third time for the um, sort of third batch of all the the corals and the seaweed. So I try to get as many sort of done at one time as possible and that's where the post-it tape comes in really handy. You just have to be careful to make sure that you've really got them centered perfectly over the image so you get a nice sort of white border around the image. Now I have some foam 
and some stick it adhesive so I'm adding the stick it adhesive to the foam just press it down really well and now I'm just putting a piece of white cardstock there and I am going to use these stitched rectangles to cut a frame so I'm using the largest and the second largest and you can see how I created a nice sort of popped up frame there going to adhere some acetate to that and then so that it'll pop off the background I'm adding some foam tape you could certainly um, cut a second foam frame from the fun foam but this was just easier I hadn't cut I hadn't cut them both at the same time so this was just a little bit quicker you can do it either way I'm going to just place all my components and sort of get an idea of where they fit on my card how many I need of those little seaweeds and corals and then I'm just putting my frame over it to make sure I'm not covering too many of them I had to sort of edge some of those upwards a little bit then I have this little you know I can't remember what it's called but it's sort of like an adhesive you put your little pieces in and pull the tape out and there's adhesive on the backing I will link to it at the moment I just my mind is blank I can't remember what it's called so this is sort of a quick and easy way to get all of them sort of done at the same time just make sure you sort of press down after you pull it out so that the adhesive really sticks to the backing of the images and of course I guess I forgot to mention the um, background was completely dry uh, by the time I did this so you have to wait a little bit of time but the background came out really really pretty and I let it air dry I didn't use um, a heat tool or anything I let it dry naturally I find that it looks a little bit better if you do that so getting everything stuck down here I decided I wanted to stamp the school of fish that comes with the set so I'm doing that with archival ink this time this is a waterproof ink stamping some of the single fishes as well and then I'm going to grab that um, watercolor palette again and because the colors here it they're very opaque so I was able just to color right over top the background and get a really nice um, bright yellow color so I did all of the fish yellow except one just sort of cleaning up the edges there and then that last fish I made him a little bit different a little bit more orange and you can see how nicely it just covers right over the blue so I'm just showing you here the colors I used and then I decided because that worked so well I decided to stamp some bubbles there's a little bubble stamp that comes with the set so I stamped the bubbles there's um, one with three and one single so I just sort of scattered them over the background and then I'm going to use the palette again and there's a nice sort of pearlized white color and I'm putting that over the bubbles and it turned out really nicely it totally covers that blue just showing you which one I used there so now comes the fun part I am going to pull the adhesive off I'm going to scatter some sequins a little mix pack here of white and clear sequins and hearts and just put it over top and there's my shaker card I decided I did want to stamp a sentiment on it so I'm using my misty to help me center that properly stamping that with some aqua ink and I did it two times and my shaker card is done thank you so much for watching a full list of supplies and links can be found below this video on YouTube or on my blog